This is JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Dean Perrine coming at you on location in beautiful Miami, Florida at Metro Connect 2020. And with me right now is Mr. Jim Marazzi. Jim is the president and CEO of DQE Communications. Jim, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks for having us here today. You bet, you bet. So Jim, for our viewers that don't already know, why don't you tell them a little bit about DQE? Sure. So DQE Communications is a metro optic fiber network headquartered in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We've got about 3,700 miles of fiber in Western Pennsylvania, serve businesses of all sizes, primarily focused on enterprise business, hospitals, schools, government, things of that nature. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit about your ne- your network. I understand that um, there is um, some expansion uh, in Harrisburg, right. um, and so why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about that expansion? Sure. So again, you know we're based in Pittsburgh, but we have seen a lot of opportunity in the Harrisburg area, which is the state capital of Pennsylvania. A number of our customers in the Pittsburgh area have operations there, so we're following our customers as they continue to move and grow, and serving their bandwidth needs there. Let's talk about your customers a little bit then. Um, I, I mean, I understand that there is there is probably not a one size fits all or a one solution for every customer. And and you kind of have run with that. So a lot of your solutions are custom fit or designed for your your, your customers. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about the, the benefit of that, um, that custom fit solution? Yeah, that's exactly right. And we do think about it like that. It is truly a custom design for each and every customers. Some are looking for dark fiber solutions mm-hmm. with high redundancy and unique routes. Some are looking for Metro Ethernet services that have one gig, 10 gig kinds of services and are looking for certain kind of delivery factors. So when we think about how we can serve a customer, it's always with a white sheet of paper and thinking about it from their perspective, their needs and what is important to them. So we truly do build something that's unique for each and every customer as opposed to just off the shelf or cookie cutter kind of a thing. And that really has done really, really well for us over the years Mm -hmm. because the larger hospital systems, state government, you know, city government, they look for those kinds of solutions. And you have to be a provider who can offer those kinds of things to the customers. I love that. I love that, which is a great segue into kind of our next topic of discussion that we, we hear a lot about IoT and AI and, and all of these very, very buzzy uh, tech words. But um, ultimately, you know, um, how, how, how it plays out is, is largely dependent on some of the work that you do. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about how what it is that you do is ultimately advancing those newer technologies? Sure. So fiber really is the critical link here. And, you know, that may sound like it's a little bit of homeschool kind of thing here, but uh, it's the true plumbing behind right. all of these things with regard to 5G technology, mm-hmm. Internet of Things. If you don't have a robust communication platform that can move all that tremendous amount of data, it doesn't work. Yeah. So the, the critical link, at least in our judgment, in our view, is building that infrastructure to support the growth of these kinds of technologies, whether it's autonomous driver for vehicles, mm-hmm. 5G small cells, Internet of Things, all that is really important and based upon the robustness of the network. Yeah. Fiber is the key. No, it absolutely makes sense. I, I, I don't understand how these technologies do anything without the fiber enabler and enabling them to actually work. So, um, so let's talk 2020 a little bit and beyond, maybe if, if we can. Okay. Um, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about what they might be able to expect from DQE over the next year, and, and how about maybe even the next five years? Yeah, so a couple of things. Number one is just continued further penetration of our existing market. You know, we are a market leader in the Pittsburgh area. You know, clearly we have a tremendous and robust fiber network, and we have a tremendous. Uh, market share there, but there's always room to continue to grow and we'll continue to grow with our customers. Second thing is geographic expansion. Mm-hmm. You know, we're moving to where our customers need us to be and we'll do that in a in a thoughtful, engineered way. And lastly, it's the new services that customers look for as well. Things like uh, distributed denial service kind of mitigation services, yeah. uh, SD-WAN services, those kinds of things that add another layer of platform to the customer and gives them the ability to manage their networks the way they want to manage their networks. So those are the kinds of things we'll be doing in 2020 and beyond. Excellent. Jim, thank you very much for being with us today. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You got it. You got it. And thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV and listening to JSA Podcasts. Um, that's it for us right now. So uh, we'll see you soon and happy networking. Happy networking.